Hey y'all, in for H and H here. It is 9:21 p.m. in the east on June 13th as I film this, and uh, 10 meter FM is open. And I just worked a couple of guys uh, here. I should have grabbed the camera, but I worked uh, VE3 MMX. That's Mike, and this is his repeater. It's in London, Ontario. And then uh, after I signed with Mike, Kirk came in. And uh, Kirk is VE3SLO, Victor Echo 3, Sierra Lima Oscar. And he's uh, a viewer of, of the YouTube channel here. So it was a pleasure to meet a viewer on the air. And again, that's Kirk. Hello, Kirk, if you're watching this. Thanks for, for the QSO. And I, I wanted y'all to see something. Uh, well, they're not transmitting right now, but that repeater's been coming in as, as much as 25 over 9, uh, which is, the, I've, I, I have talked through it before. In fact, um, the last QSO I had with uh, Mike, there he is. The last QSO I had with Mike was in 2022, and I recorded that the repeater was 10 over 9 then. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's getting better. Look at the meter. Now, on this high of a frequency, knowing that the S meter is calibrated at 14.2, at, uh, 14.2 14 14 .2 megahertz, I'll kick in amp two just to get a little bit more of uh, probably an accurate reading. Look at that meter going up there above 20. And it has been at 25 uh, at times. It's good and strong. A lot of times, 10 meter FM up here is a lot of QSB. It's holding pretty steady tonight. I mean, look at that. Now I want to show you something else. Um, well, I'll, I'll do this while zoomed in. This is an excellent opportunity. We'll move the camera a little bit so you can see this head on. There we go. Oh, Doug, wrong direction. All right. Wow. So I'm going to change antennas. Yeah, I'm going to talk you through which antennas I'm using, give you an idea of uh, how good this one antenna I'm listening on right now is. Now, the repeater has probably got a vertical antenna, but you know, once the uh, signal hits the ionosphere, it can tumble and change, and that's why we don't get concerned about whether we're running a vertical or a horizontal. All right, I'm going to change antennas here for a second. Oh, wow. You heard a little bit of white noise come in, and you saw the meter drop back to the other antenna. Just changed. Okay, that, right now we're listening on my 160-meter doublet. Close to 60 feet in the air. Squelch. That should be good. They have I just switched to my ZS6 Bravo Kilo Whiskey, ZS6 BKW, which is at about 50 feet in the air. Or close to it. It might be, well, no, yeah, it's about 50 feet up. I just had to have some tree work done. The antennas got moved and they actually both wound up a little higher. Now, while I'm over on this antenna, which is Coming through an antenna switch, I'm going to switch to an off-center fed dipole right now. Oh, there was a fade. Let me go back. ZS6BKW, off-center fed dipole. Okay, now I'm going to go to a vertical. That's a Cushcraft R5. Back to the ZS6BKW. Off-center fed dipole. Now, to be fair, the off-center fed dipole probably doesn't have a good lobe in that direction. The, you know, and it's oriented there. It's at 50, about 50 feet, 52 maybe, the the height of the off-center fed dipole. Those of you who've watched my channel for a while know what it is. It's a Fritzl FD4. It is my favorite off-center fed dipole. Kurt Fritzl, German designer, he's a silent key now, but he did a great job, and I've had the antenna now since uh, around 1993, and it's made out of aircraft control cable. I mean, it's, it's just built so well, 
and I've, I've, you know, I, you know me. If if you watch my channel enough, you know my my antennas are all threaded through trees. And even at my previous QTH, where I where I lived when I first got that off center fed dipole, uh, I had to get creative in setting it up there. But here, you know, it's basically threaded through trees, and that thing's so strong. I've been able to uh, that antenna is just built so well. I, you know, as I was pulling it up, if it hit a a little limb or whatever, I'd just break the limb with that cable. <laughs> just pull it on, and it's been a great antenna. But uh, you know, it's it. There it is, right there, off center fed dipole. It just seldom beats the ZS6 BKW, to be flat honest. I'm just amazed at the performance of this particular uh, ZS6 BKW, and I don't, uh, I don't receive any money for endorsements. So you guys that watch my channel know that I, I don't, I don't do that because I want to be able to tell you the, the good, the bad, and the ugly about anything. So anything I tell you on my channel that I like, I really like it. I'm not being paid to tell you that. And NI4L, that is NI4L.com, makes this ZSX BKW I'm using. And I've recommended it to so many people. And every one of them is absolutely phenomenally pleased with it. So if you watch the video, I installed one. My brother and I did a while back, a few months ago. We installed one for a ham that's about an hour and 15 or 20 minutes away from here. And... Um, we put a ZS6 BKW up for him. He had been using um, a vertical uh, Hustler 6B TV. And he is uh, uh, one of the principal net control operators for the Hurricane Watch Net. And um, I, I, I knew he should be able to get out better with horizontal wire. So my brother and I went out there and uh, we got one put in for him. And it's really killing it. He says it's just unbelievable. So there you go. That is the ZSX BKW off center fed dipole vertical. Vertical's 15 over this vertical, and uh, well, it's fading now. But the, uh, there we go. The ZSX BKW has been running 20 to 25. So, just wanted you to see that. Again, be very careful about judging an antenna by one situation, okay? I know that the ZS, look at that, 25 over. I know that the ZSX BKW is outperforming the off center fed dipole mm, probably 97% of the time because of longevity of using them. I've been using these antennas for years. I've had the, well, like I said, the off-center fed dipole since 93. I got the ZS6 BKW about five years ago, and it just consistently uh, performs so, so well. Now, I'm a little bit surprised that I didn't have a better signal. I'm going to switch over to it with the doublet. There's the doublet. It's not bad. There goes the ZS6. doublet ZS6 it looks like about a 5 dB difference uh, but again the, the doublet probably doesn't have a good lobe in that direction because that's 250 feet of wire out there in the air the the ZS6 BKW is um, it's a little over 47 feet of wire per side then you've got the ladder line Ooh, look at that getting close to 30 uh, you've got the ladder line, which is window line, and it's 420 ohm window line coming down, a little over 39 feet of that. Uh, because the ZS6 BKW is a type of doublet, it's in the doublet family. Uh, but the, uh, you know, 250 feet of wire in the air, um, that's that's a hoss. And where it's got a good lobe, it's usually, it's usually going to be the winner. But the ZS6 BKW has has been giving it a run for the money lately since they both got got moved. And and the thing is, the ZS6 BKW only probably went up a foot or two in elevation. But I'll tell you what is different. The the guys I had doing the tree work, I usually do it myself, but I had some guys out here cutting down the trees, so they they used a throwback. 
and they actually got the wire for the ZS6 BKW on one side. They got that wire up. It's basically horizontal. The wire on the other side is still sloping down. By the way, antennas are more forgiving than we give them credit for. Don't get too hung up about, oh, it's got to be just so perfect horizontal or perfect ang uh, angle at the apex for a inverted V. You just don't want to get down to 90 degrees on an inverted V. Um, but, you know, you can make a lazy dipole. It doesn't matter if the middle is, um, you know, high and then the ends droop a little bit, but not quite, not quite down in the inverted V uh, area. But maybe, let's say maybe you got an um, angle of 150 degrees at the, uh, at the um, apex there instead of a 180. I mean, that's okay. I mean, it's kind of like a lazy dipole. And that's okay too. Don't get too hung up about all those. If you hear, if you have people telling you that you've got to achieve perfection putting up an antenna, no, just get some wire in the air. Let me tell you one other thing. My my off center fed dipole that I mentioned a while ago, at my previous QTH, I had I didn't have a big enough yard to stretch it out. Okay, it's it's 135 feet fed off center, so one length the, you got the feed point and then on one side it's 90 feet and the other side it's 45 feet uses a six to one 3000 watt ballon uh all right so i wasn't able to fit 135 feet on my lot at my previous qt8 so one of my neighbors was kind enough to let me use one of her trees but it was still not enough that i could stretch it well look at that peeking uh, it, it still wasn't far enough that I could stretch it out a full 135 feet. So what I had to do was at the at the feed point, I had to take the other wire, the shorter wire, a different direction. And if you had been in a helicopter looking straight down at that antenna, it would have been closer to a letter L. Okay, there was it wasn't a 90 degree angle, but it was probably a 120 and uh, 120 degree angle. And it worked just fine. It did. Not the ideal installation, but I'll say to you this, especially if you're new and with band conditions like they are right now, take advantage of cycle 25's peak. Just get some wire in the air. Don't get, don't wait until you can do it perfectly. Get something up so you can get on the air if, if you're new to this. All right. Well, hey, thanks for watching the video. I hope you got something out of that. I just thought it was an interesting opportunity to show you not only that FM, uh, the FM portion of 10 meters is open. Uh, let me zoom back out here. You're looking at the FTDX 5000. DX 10's over here. I've been playing with it for a while, so I thought I'd come back to the 5000. The, I said DX 10. I call it that, the FTDX 10. You know, that guy, he's sitting right there with the cover ready to go. So I was on the 5000 tuning. I thought, yeah, let me check out 10 meter, um, FM and and the reason was I was looking at the at the uh, ham clock and I was seeing some 10 meter posts there and I thought well let me go check out 10 meter FM I do that every now and then just to see you never know and boom I, you know you know those of you who have a 5000 here's what I did back to uh, I'll go back to uh, VFO mode so there's 10 meter sideband so I went to memory mode and then a long press this button here because I've got my memories divided into groups. There's the 60 meter group. And see if I want to cycle through 60 meters, I long press here. And now I'm cycling through the 60 meter channels, right? See there, there's the CW group. And then, uh, but if I want to cycle through the 10 meter FM area, uh, I'll just go back over here, long press and go down and see it till I see 29.6. That's 10 meter FM's calling frequency. And now I'll long press this button here in the middle again. Those of you who have a 5,000, I've, I've shown this in another video where I zoom in and everything. I'm not doing that right now. I just want to get get this into the video. If you have a 5,000, you, you, you see where, I'm, where I am here. Now that's calling frequency. There's a, a, a repeater, there's a repeater, and that's the one we've been listening to. There's another repeater frequency and yet another repeater frequency that I keep in there and I'll just go through them to see if there's anything open. And sure enough, I heard some activity here on 29640. All right, again, hey, thanks for watching videos on my channel. Please hang around for a half a minute. I want to acknowledge five of the Patreon team long haulers, members who have supported this channel. 
for one, two, three or more years. Without them, you wouldn't have seen this video or the hundreds of others because of the way I operate the channel, not aligning myself with any manufacturer, I'm strictly funded by private donations. So if you like this type of content and want to see it continue, consider uh, joining the Patreon team as well. So I'm going to acknowledge five of those members who helped bring this video to you right now. 73 from N4 H&H. &H.